welcome to episode 11. So in our previous episode, uh, in episode 10, we looked at uh, they forgot uh, the forgot password uh, endpoints where we looked at forgot password, verify, uh, verify email, and uh, even uh, change password. It was really, really nice. And uh, we learned a lot of things. Now, uh, the some people who just in the WhatsApp group and even in the comment section who said we're just going to work on refresh tokens. And um, I think it was also the password reset count. Yeah, we're just going to come back just in a short uh, on that. Uh, when we're just going to be implementing rate limiting uh, just in a, I think, a future episode, in the next episode. But in today's episode, I just want us to go back in the sales. There is something we we have to complete with sales. And so that's what I want us to actually start with. So going back here, uh, I would have the, uh, the server running. I just want to start by first deleting the sales we have. So I will just go here and just say NPX Prisma bb uh, prisma studio actually so i just want to first remove the cells because you're just going to make some breaking changes in the cells so i just might want to actually delete the cells start by deleting the cell item which is here delete this one like so and then just going to proceed to the cells which is actually so have one cell just like this I'll just go ahead and also delete this. Okay, that's good. So let's talk about the differences. The first one, we're just going to add a relationship between sales and the shops. Uh, these are going to be different shops and each shop is going to be making its own sales. So the sales are going to be dependent on a specific uh, shop. Therefore, in the shop model, and in the sales model, we have to modify to add that relationship. And it is a one to many. Uh, like sales must belong to a particular shop, meaning that um, it is a one to many. One shop has many sales. Okay, so you just have to come here in the shop model and we just add sales just like this. So I'll just add a just going to stop the Prisma Studio and also I just stop this one and I will just open my models and let's start by just going to the shop. So you can just go here, look for this shop and let's go ahead and add this. So just going to add sales uh, here in the shop and then uh, let's go ahead in the uh in the sales just going to go ahead and add this so in the sales you can see that we just modify and add the shop id so just have to add the shop id plus uh so here we'll have the shop id and also the shop just like this Okay, so this one adds a relationship to uh, between a sale and a shop, and this is nice. The second thing uh, we have to do is now uh, creating of the shop changes. So if I just go back to the routes, uh, here create sale, that means that we have to add in the shop ID. So down here, just going to be having the shop ID, just like this. And for that, they just also so go ahead and say NPX Prisma BB push, just like this. And maybe we we'll also start NPM run Dave. Okay, so just get this shop ID. And let's now go ahead and here on this, let's go ahead and create the shop ID. Just add it. Just add the shop ID like this. 
Okay, just add it on this. So shop ID is going to be definitely a string. And we can just go back here and we are good. So just add it in the create here, the shop ID. And now, and then uh, another thing, so that is one thing we've just done. We have added this uh, shop ID to add a relationship in the sale. Now, another uh, thing we have talked about is actually about the credit. So the, we have a lot going on with the credit and I'm just going to first take you back to the schema here. So starting from the customer point of view, if we just go in the sale, down here we have a customer. And if you just go in the customer, you can see the customer has these three things. So the customer has a max credit limit. So this max credit limit, uh, this is the amount, amount of credit a customer can have a customer can have like uh or can cannot exceed this is the amount of credit a customer can borrow okay can borrow or can like cannot exceed this amount anyways and this uh, max credit days is the amount of days the uh the our customer have to pay the credit to pay the credit okay and then this unpaid credit amount is the outstanding credit outstanding outstanding credit or oh, this is an unpaid credit amount as you can hear the word so these figures are going to be being modified as we move on okay these have to be modified as we move on and these ones work hand in hand with so if you just go back here and you just click to go to uh i think okay here sales okay so if you just go in sales they have to work in hand hand in hand with this so the first one is sale amount so this is the total amount okay from the sale items so this is the total amount we get from the sale items when we add the total let's say you bought a bag of uh you bought a bag at this much and then you bought shoes at this much so the total amount from these items is the sale amount then we have another one which is the paid amount so this paid amount uh this is the amount so this is the amount uh, the customer have paid either via mobile money or cash but the amount the customer have paid so the the balance amount is the difference between the sale amount and uh, the paid amount paid amount and the purpose of this is to determine if this was a a credit or it was a full payment okay so we just have to understand if this was a credit and this balance amount can tell us that that is the purpose of this and all these ones they have to make sense when it comes to actually to making a sale okay making us to revisit these uh making the sale so let's start with checking if the balance amount is 
greater than zero. So if the balance amount is greater than zero, a lot of things have to happen. So you can see up here, just getting the shop ID and in, we also get this uh, balance amount. And the balance amount, even if we don't send it, we might not actually just even send uh, this or we can calculate it from there. It doesn't matter. So we can just check if the balance amount is greater than zero. You see here, if the balance uh, pay amount is greater than zero. So if this is greater than zero, a lot of things have to happen. Okay. So the first thing uh, uh, here, we have to uh, update the customer and a paid amount and also update the customer the credit amount so we can just go ahead and find this uh, we can just say const uh, updated uh, updated uh, customer is equal to await uh, db dot uh customer i don't know if we should a eh, okay i think we are just already in the transaction so just use a transaction here transaction dot and here we can just say dot customer dot update so here we just need to update and basically what you're updating uh we just need to pass in where id is customer id And then uh, we have to so pass in the data. And basically what we just want to do is update the credit. In this case, we just need to do the something like this. Uh, data here we just need to do an unpaid credit amount and we're just going to increment here and we just increment with the balance amount with the balance amount so we just get whatever is there and we just increment it by this uh, balance amount of course we will see in the cases when you're just going to create an endpoint for updating this like when he's paying the credit will be decrementing so another thing we have to do is we're not only just doing this one but we have to decrement so i have to go here and just say max credit limit and this one is going to be decrement so let's say he was having a credit uh he had a credit uh, of 100 as his max so when he takes and borrows maybe 30000 the an unpaid amount has to be 30 but then for this max credit has to be uh, 100 minus 30 so it has to decrease that's why for the max credit limit we decrement by the balance amount okay so yeah so the, the the customer has to be updated and if for some reason uh if we cannot update the customer then we can just go ahead and the Um, we can just go ahead and uh, just return maybe just a response of saying we fail to update so here we just say fail to update the 
customer uh, credit details. Okay, uh, just like this. Um, so this is not um, stopping this to proceed. Okay, so when this updates, uh, when this updates, then we just continue with the execution. So this is something which is just like a uh, business, like we're not returning anything out of this, just like an if statement, if the balance amount uh, is greater than this. And ultimately, also one thing that we have to do is while creating a cell, I think we have to do a lot of things because even in the cell, let me see. Oh, okay. Uh, in the cell, we're just like storing it, so it is it is okay. So I think this is just one thing that we need to we needed to update in this to update those two fields. Okay. Mm. Another thing we have to check. Um, before we do those updates, I think we have also to check if the, the customer is allowed to take credit, to take credit, okay? So we have to check so first let's get the customer const existing customer so let's say here yeah, existing uh customer is equal to await uh transaction dot customer dot find unique and you can just go ahead and just say where and id is equal to customer id just like this so after getting this customer then we can just say if if the credit so if here the We're just going to check and see if the balance amount is greater is greater than existing uh, customer dot max credit uh, limit. So we need to check and c is possibly undefined also oh, we just have to check here one thing uh if no existing customer then you have to return something if uh no existing customer then we have just to return uh, response the status of four zero four. Okay. Um, we have to and by the way, we could just also do this because uh 
Is there anything else we upgrade? Okay, I just agree with here. Dot uh, JSON, and then in the JSON we can just say error, and we can just say customer not found. Okay, and then you can say data of now. Okay, then down here we can now do this. Okay, so just need to, I think, put this here. Okay, so if the balance amount uh, is greater than existing customer dot max credit, if this is this amount is greater than this one, then we have to return also here an error. We can just say maybe target a four zero three or four zero and say here. Uh, this customer is not eligible for credit, eligible for credit. So this person cannot take uh, credit uh, if the balance amount is exceeding the max credit amount. Okay. So yeah, that is a condition we have to check also to make sure that the person who's going to take the credit is actually uh, allowed to take it. Then when that one happens, then we can just go ahead and update all these details. Okay, great. So now down here, we just go ahead and make this, uh, the sale with the SOAP ID and I think that's the only thing we need to do for now. Okay. Uh, so now, right now, we can just try to test this endpoint. Uh, uh, down here, we have the sales, and then we have create a sale with these details. Let's go ahead and first get the shop. So you can just go to the shops, and here on get shops, just going to go ahead and run this. Okay, so you have this Chereka shop. We have two shops just like this. Okay. And I'm just going to go to now to create a sale. We have to add in the shop ID. So shop ID is going to be uh, this like so okay so for this uh, uh, customer we can just go and look at this customer uh, with this customer the customer here we get customers So we have this actually Joel Smith, and you can see here max credit limit is 200,000. Okay, so we can just go ahead and try to get a, a uh, the payment, and we just make like 300 to do the tests. So let me just go back to create a cell here. So if we try to go ahead and just say, for instance, that this one. Uh, the sale amount is let's say three hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, and I'm just going to say here the balance amount is going to be three hundred thousand, so he doesn't want to pay anything, and the paid amount is zero. Okay, so 
this now should not create according to our API, right? I'm just going to send this. Okay, so you can see now here is a, this customer is not eligible for this credit amount. Uh, maybe if we, yeah. Uh, I just going to change it a little bit. We just say is not eligible. Uh, just here. Uh, where is it here? Just going to modify a little bit this, and I just say this customer is not eligible for this. Not eligible for this. Uh, this credit and you just would take the balance payment balance amount yes uh do it one more time and this is a bad request um i don't know i think it's supposed to be like 403 forbidden Mm, just make it for zero three. Sorry. Yeah, forbidden. This customer is not eligible for this credit. Three hundred thousand. Great. Um. So just go ahead and now say he wants to pay now two hundred thousand. Okay, so if he just pays for 200,000, right? So what we just need to do is uh, here say type credit paid amount, that means he has to pay 100,000. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make this sale. Could not send request. view in console let's just go to the console and see what could be the problem uh, cannot set headers uh max transaction error range error maximum call size i think this is about i think the transaction uh, cannot say it headers after they have sent to uh, Uh, here the here we cannot see the I don't know why I can't get a clean error here in my console. Okay. Like, I don't know why it is to the what? Me stop and let me run again. Uh, how do they run? I just want to go ahead and make a here. I want to confirm if this is about the the prisma because now the transaction might be taking more time, which might actually need to be increased.
Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, so this was created. Oke, okay, so you can see a cell was uh, created here. Oke. Okay. So if we just go to this uh, customer, Joel, we need to see if these details were updated. So I can just go back to the get customers. Let's go ahead and send back this. Now, Joel, uh, you can see now he has a max credit limit of zero. So the all the money was now taken. He has no credit now. And the unpaid credit amount is still now. So this, I wonder what I put because it has not updated. Uh, let's just go and make a uh, check. When we are updating, uh, we found the existing customer here. And here on updating the customer. So we first Uh, this is an unpaid credit amount we did increment with the balance payment. Max credit amount, on the other hand, maybe this does not exist. Does increment exist? Uh... Does increment exist? I'm just going to go here. Let's say what's wrong with the increment. Uh, as the increment is not existing or something. The negative value here. It is okay. I wonder why this is still null. And an update. Uh, let's first go here in the schema. I just want to go to the customer. Uh, let's look at this. Okay, I'm just going to remove this. So the float.
I wonder why when the default is zero and it is having null. That is uh, weird. How this person has an unpaid credit of null when the default is zero. Uh, that's really weird. Mm. I'm just going to delete that cell and make it once again. Uh, let me just add uh, the studio here. Just going to go here and delete this cell. Okay. I will go to this customer here. Increase his uh, let me just go to this customer and let's look at his Let's just see here, max script limit. I'm just going to make it three, uh, 300,000. Just make it 200,000. Okay, this one is just like this. Save changes. Uh, let's just go back to Postman and let's create a share, a sale. So sale amount, paid amount, balance amount. Um, Wondering why, uh, why it is still so since uh, this is a customer, uh. I'm just going to restart also here. Okay, let me just go ahead and post a new sale, still the same person. Okay. Uh, let's go to the customers. So here it is saying an unpaid credit amount, it is still zero so i'm just going to change in the formula maybe seems like the the update is not uh, working very well uh here where we are updating the customer so let me just go ahead and say that and i paid amount is going to be existing customer dot and a paid credit amount plus the balance amount so let me just change in the formula and let's try again i will go back to here i'm going to do the sale I will go back to the customer. I will just change 
the max squared limit back to 200. And this image just also make some changes in this JSON. Oh, creating a cell. Let's say this time on 300,000 is going to pay in cash 200,000. Okay. Uh, we are in the response. Let's just go here. Let's just see him uh, says balance of 100. Pay them on 200. Uh, let's just go ahead and run this one more time. And it creates. You can see sell amount paid and the balance let's go to the customer uh, let's get the customers and max credit limit is a hundred and an unpaid credit amount is a hundred so that is really great now we are good so we can now update those things and they will be helping us so much when it comes to that Okay, so having made those changes, let's go actually to today's uh, uh, changes. So in today's changes, I'm just going to pull out the notes here, maybe in the PowerPoint. So Today, what I wanted to implement was about uh, sales analytics. And here on the right is having a photo from uh, how the mobile app will be looking like. You will have the stores or the shops. And then uh, we'll have on the dashboard, this is the welcome dashboard with all these analytics. And as you can see, there are sales analytics. They tell us, for instance, how much are today's sales in the two shops this week and this month. Uh, we'll, we'll add one more for uh, like all the time since the shops were created. Uh, so we have this today, this week, this month, and all time. So we have to have, as you can see, total sales. Okay. And then here there is even the gross profit of which we will calculate also later on. But then we have also this, uh, the cash, the credit, uh, then the voucher, we don't have voucher and check, so we have the cash and credit. And then we have the mobile money, then we have how much is also in credit. We will not have wallets. So we just have also the credit payment. So all these, as we said here, we have to put into consideration the sales period. So for instance, getting the sales um, for different periods, today, this week, and this month, and so on and so forth. We'll have to get uh, sales that have been paid in cash. Okay, like how much, as you can see here, as you can see here, we have uh, just a second. Okay, so uh, we're discussing about the analytics we need to put into considerations. Uh, we need to look at sales uh, paid in credit, uh, like uh, if those ones are the ones we, are, we saw and also sales in mobile money, and also sales by hand cash, like the ones that will be paid by uh, hand cash, okay, like the ones the person has paid, uh, not by mobile money, but by just paying over the counter, okay? So we just need to get those sales, and in doing that, I just created here, if you just go to the docs, 
uh, look in where we have Prisma transaction here. Okay, you just say down here we have said analytics controllers. So just going to start with the simple uh, like uh, controllers. I think we're just going to go straight to the we have the two types of these types of controllers. We have the first, for instance, getting the shop sales. And every time we just say getting the shop sales, uh, this is just like the sales for a particular sale uh, shop. Okay. Uh, so this one will return the sales for a specific shop categorized by the periods why you have like today this week this month and all time and this one is just like getting uh the sales but to make this one much better so if you see here we also get shops sales and this one gets returns the sales data for existing shops categorized by the period but we want to actually i think this one is going to be the much better getting the categorized shop sales so this counter now will return sales for a particular shop with detailed categorization. For instance, sales paid in cash, uh, sales paid by credit, sales paid by mobile money, and sales paid by hand cash, as we looked into uh, here. So just like doing all these, uh, actually, the, all the categorizations, okay? Yeah, uh, because if you just look here, this is how we want these, uh, the cate uh, this categorization to happen. Okay, so in the first ones, in the first two here, they don't have other categorizations, as you can see here, for instance, here, uh, just like this. you get this sales here with these uh, uh dates just like this but we just need to go ahead and c categorize this one uh these sales so to categorize them we just go ahead and do this so i'm just going to go ahead and create these controllers let me start with this one. Actually, let me start from down here. Uh, let me start with this first one. Copy this. And let's just say, go ahead and get. I'm just going to go ahead under sales. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, start. So we have this already get sales just like which gets the all the sales of all times but let's go ahead and just go here for instance gate so this one is going to be given a name of export uh, gate so here we have the shop sales so these ones are it's supposed to return as you can see it gets the shop id and it returns the sales for this particular shop Let's just go ahead and also import these uh, from date fn. So uh, in the previous episode, we installed date fn. So just go ahead and just get these all imports on top, just like so. And let's go ahead and start understanding this. So we first get defined the time periods. Uh, today start and today end. This one will help us get the today's sales. Then week start and week end will help us to get the week sales. And month start and month end will help us get the month sales. Okay. So here we're just going to go ahead and have fetch sales for different periods. So we first start uh, having this function, which actually takes uh, categorizes sales, categorize sales, and just takes in sales. And we categorize, uh, we return an object. If you look at this, this is returning an object. And the object is taking, is just like filtering the sales for different things. For instance, 
uh, the sales paid in cash. You just access dot filter and we just only get uh, sales whose are paid by cash and the balance is less or equal to zero. Okay. And then we have these ones paid in credit. We just also do filter. And this one is sale payment is in credit, uh, uh, is in cash. And the sale uh, balance is above zero. I think we don't need to. Mm. Uh, for this, we don't need to do this. Uh, for instance, sales paid in credit, we don't need to actually put in this payment method because someone might just pay uh, with mobile money. The only thing we just need to consider is that the sale uh dot balance is greater than zero so let's just like do this okay and then sales by mobile money we just says filter and then payment method is mobile money and then this one says by hand cash it's going to be filter sale payment method is equal cash and uh the sale balance is less than zero okay that one is okay so this one we just go and say db dot sale dot find shop id and then we get this so this is the sales uh today and then we can just also get for this week okay and then we have this month okay and then afterwards this series of all time is just getting the this and then we can just go ahead and we have a return response to this and we can have today this week this month and all time okay and they will be having the categorizations this one is because this categorized series returns an object right okay so we can also um uh, we could just add one more in the categorize it this one because there is just like this but if you look on the this i think there is also this uh the total sales without being categorized uh there is a sort of total sales without being categorized so uh we need to just simply uh put one which is just going to be just sales so i'm just going to also put one which is just going to be sales just like this okay just add that and then we have also uh for some reason there is also gross profit mm, that one really takes in something uh to guess the gross profit I guess the gross profit is getting the difference uh, gross profit. We shall see how we are going to catch it gross profit. I'm just going to first leave it out. So for now, I'm just going to have uh, this object uh, get these shop sales. I'm just going to just get uh, also go down here and let's get also for the entire all the shops so we have the one for one shop two shops let's just go ahead and just uh get for all shops that one was for one shop so let me just go down here and let's put this okay and this one is getting shops there is get shop and then there is get 
shops sales okay so here we have the period as usual we have also the categorization which i'm just going to add also sales just like this uh it also does the same exact thing in order to just say it here for paid in cash a paid in credit uh, we don't need to consider cash payment method to be cash because someone can still so long as he has the sale dot balance return zero mobile money and then buy hand cash okay so just yes, go here is going to be db so the difference here is that we are just uh, doing sale dot group by so this one groups by the shop id okay and then it gets the sum and it takes in the consideration for this and we do it for all the periods uh just like this db even here db okay and we just just go ahead and just return just like this okay so what i'm just going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and uh go get and put in consideration for these so just going to go to sales yeah okay and let's just go ahead and put more things here so here just going to say sales uh, and then I'm just going to say shop that is getting uh for one shop and then sales and then you can just say shops for you say all shops okay sales all shops and then he's going to get here get shops sales and then he's going to get get shop sales so there's get shop sales just like this and one more thing is that we have to see how this one is uh, for instance for the a single shop you see that this uh, actually enters as a param okay so you just have to pass the shop id as a param okay so i'm just going to go ahead and i'm so curious to see what happens for instance if i just go and get the money for all shops let me just go to sales yeah where we get get sales i'm just going to duplicate some of these ones so let's go ahead and duplicate so this one is going to be get shops sales and this one just simply just say stock shops i think it's stock or shops uh, just like this uh, let me just go back here and i cross check just cross check with the we can cross check with sell here uh, they are all gate all shops so it is all shops let's send okay so we have today so for instance today we have the sale uh today for the sales we have this and then for others we have um, an empty uh we have this empty stuff okay uh sale amount by cash i thought we would have a list in the cash here we have these oh oh okay we have today a list so we have under today we have and also this week we have 
this month we have uh and we have also all time we have uh there is one i just like uh, did i just give it um uh, maybe let me just go and change this key on gate shop sales i'm just going to go ahead and just change this one to uh toto yes like this just going to have this as total just like this and i think we should also do a reduce on this i don't know if we're just going to do the reduce from the front end but it would be better if we did i think a reduce uh let me also in this make this one to be total total um total sales uh total sales Okay, uh, let me just run one more time. Okay, so send. Okay, so the total sales we put, it went under. Oh, actually it is, I think, understandable. Let me just zoom this in. So remember we have today, so still they are categorized, uh, uh, still they are under these three. You have an object here, and this object is also an object. So you have, for instance, today, this week, this month, and all time. So you have all these keys, and even these keys are objects. They return this. Okay. Uh, so let's just go under this, uh, understand, so we have today, for instance, total sales is this one, okay, and then sales paid in cash, I don't know if these filters work, I'm not so sure. Uh, we're just going to find out in a second. If these filters work, uh, here you can see all these ones, which is really weird. For instance, sales by hand cash should just say something. This week, uh, so all of them are just like returning an empty array, meaning that. So if you look at the sales that are entering here, actually, okay. uh the cells that are entering in here are having a few keys because if it looks like this uh, this is the array which is the original one okay uh let me just see here so these cells are for instance today we have to go back here on this sales for instance today so you can see they do uh where sales dot find many where so and this 
I wonder where do they uh where do we miss oh I just need to go to get shops I'm just in a wrong one here uh so here we have one thing actually which was actually this group by uh, and then press your id and then uh is putting here the sum okay so i don't know here uh on this by the time we reach on the categorize they don't actually have all these things they don't have fit at the sale actually the sale has no payment for instance and as uh has you no know, all these things we are trying to find like say dot balance uh payment so meaning that here uh you can just go and just say uh i'm just going to go here on chat gpt okay i'm just going to say for instance uh, i just want to go and get for instance where you have these so i'm just going to copy for instance this group by just like this just gonna see how can we add all the fields for this sale on this here so meanwhile i think for the shop if we provided the shop id let me just go and test for the shop go back to the shops here and we can just go to where we get the shops at least we have this Kampala shop. I think this is the one we use it. So we're just going to pass in the shop ID. So you can just go here. In the sales where we have get shop sales. Go ahead and duplicate this. And then here get uh, sales by shop. Or get shop sales. I can just always come here and we just say here shop and then we put question mark shop id I think it was like shop id equals this one I think we were giving it as shop id if I'm not mistaken yeah shop id so this key here the way it is here is the way you're supposed to pass it in here just go ahead and see so for this one actually you can see is actually giving us all the things okay for total sales for the sales paid in credit because this was actually paid in credit so yeah this one is good uh, is actually giving us back the actual thing we are supposed to see okay just go here and let's see uh, so to include relevant fields in a group using prisma can specify this one field by an array okay so for instance here sum uh, i don't know why he's now putting this average count main jesus uh get the highest sale date get the latest sale date uh count the number of sales in each group Mm, I'm not sure if we need all this, but I'm just going to go ahead. If this is the way we need to add the things, I'm just going to go ahead and add them here. Uh, just like this. 
sale amount paid and all that that's the only thing i'm just going to add okay i'm just going to go back here and scroll down uh where we have categorize it so here i'm just going to go ahead and just add this so i'm just going to in other words add all the fields the way we want them so i'm just going to go ahead and basically copy all these things we have here because we might actually need these i'm not sure if we just we need these uh, these are going to be used for analytics we only not just be used for analytics uh for now i'm just going to add we have say paid balance okay let's just go ahead and just put these others sale type and payment method so here we have sale type let's just go ahead and add sale type true and then a payment do we have already payment method uh, payment method uh, sorry this doesn't seem to be the right thing payment method uh, payment method here so uh they saying something here an own property does not exist in the sale aggregate input type uh what do we add in the sale aggregate type that is a same question the expected uh type comes from property sum which is declared here in this okay so How do we add uh, things? So if I just add, for instance, these two I've added, uh, let me just add in all of them and we see what happens. Uh, just here. and i'm just going to go ahead and uh, still go ahead and uh, get shop sales uh, let me just run one more time and see Okay, so here they again give like total sales. Uh, and you can see in the object. Oh, so you can see in the object we have like total sales. We don't have all these other things. We have the sum. Uh, the sales amount, the paid amount, and the actually the thing is we wanted only the sale amount. Hmm. Hmm. so i'm just going to simply just uh explain the current scenario that 
okay so that the I think we can just even just go ahead and remove this. We don't actually want this. Just go ahead and just remove them. To make much more sense actually. Just like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and just see. Uh, so as you see here in this uh, in this uh, function uh, in this controller the categorization filters are not working the categorize the filters are not working because because for instance uh, because let me just copy this uh, this uh, so we have the first one is payment method balance amount Are not present so these two are not uh, present on the sales uh, on the sales array okay that is entering entering the function so you're just going to say here the current series array looks like this and just go ahead and just create so so you're just going to just say like the sales array right now looks like this uh, currently I'm just going to say currently The current cell array looks like this. Okay, let's see what it can just do to modify this. So they say the reason the categories function isn't working is because the group by query only returns the fields specified in the aggregation sum in this case it does not include uh, other fields like payment method or balance payment to get these fields you need to modify your query strategy instead of using group by alone you can fetch the relevant series data for each period and then perform the categorization in memory okay that is uh, looks like a better strategy so here we just fetch sales data and is putting in start date and end date await db sales and do this and so that's the select i think this is a better a more better strategy of putting the start date and end date and then here we categorize the way we had done okay and then afterwards we do this and then we do find this I think this is much better. Let me just update to this one. Uh, the first one is working, so we're just not going to change it. Just going to only modify this one. Okay, so we can find the periods as usual. We fetch sales data, but taking into consideration of the start date and the end date and then we select uh select the shop id shop amount balance and so here we can add as many feeds as we want then we categorize the sales which we had already seen 
we have the total sales, uh, then cash, uh, then credit, then mobile money, and then this. This is really great. Now we just come here and get the sales data by fetching and doing this. Then after that, I think we just go ahead and then we categorize the data like this. So let's now try actually try it. Uh, this time should work. So send. Yeah, so you can see now we have at least the uh, the sales sales uh, in credit. Now it is working perfectly. Now what we need to do. Okay. Uh, what we need to do is um, what do we need to do? Create some more sales. Okay. Just need to create like uh, create another sale. This time I just want to make one in cash. So sale amount they just say six hundred. Uh, thousand balance amount is going to be zero, and then this one is going to be paid amount is going to be paid amount is going to be uh six hundred. So you can say six hundred. Uh, sale type this one is going to be cash uh, payment method agency for this let's leave it also cash so i'm just going to go ahead and create this sale uh, in this shop actually they just okay we have here internal server something went wrong And so check in the console to make sure that we don't have any errors. My console, I don't know what you guys, you can just comment in the section if you have a better thing here. Introduction error prisma. Say so create in this now we have the error and I cannot see the error. Uh, guys, if you have um you can comment uh how I can get a beta uh, if I want to see all the details in my terminal. My terminal cuts things really it is a big problem I'm having right now. I don't know, is there any way you can customize like the terminal or something? Dude, I really don't know how to really make my terminal really show all the things. Okay. Like, I really, really don't know how I can show all the things. Because right now I have the error, but I cannot see the error for all of it. Just like see a small piece of it. Uh, which is very hard now for me to debug really but they for some reason invite say dot create there is a problem in uh in the fields we have entered here basically in the fields we have entered uh, let's just see Customer email, I think all these are okay. Balance is zero. Pay them on. Now, let's just go to sale type. Might have just like uh, messed up on the sale type and so on. Just here. So this sale, uh, sale. Okay, so sell type we have paid and credit. Okay, 
the sale type we have paid and credit it is not cash it is paid so let's just go back here and say type it is paid and i have also i think to make changes a little bit in this uh, let's just go to the sales uh, let's start with get shop sales shop sales uh, here we do this i want to do this categorize function there is why we have payment method uh, in credit sale dot balance says mobile money and this so the payment method uh, let me just see that was what so type the payment method we have cash and this uh, the credit and paid so how do we get the sales paid in cash here we are saying payment method no uh, not payment method uh, it cannot be payment method okay uh this one uh, uh okay we have the ones in cash we have the ones in mobile money i don't know if uh, let me just see payment method is cash and share balance is less than zero uh, i think that one also works okay also works uh here it has to be this then payment method uh, cash let me just send this sale okay so the sale was created let's create one more sale now just going to create a sale of 100 uh, by then this is going to be everything but this is going to be mobile money uh, you can go to prisma and we can just get this or oh, even the mobile money is not just like that So whatever we have mobile money, just like this, I will say control F, control H, replace it with this, without spacing. Uh, let me hope it has fixed that. And now you can just go here and I want to put mobile money. paid amount is going to be a hundred send this payment okay so the payment was created okay so you can also just make also more payments but let's just go now go to sales uh, like for instance let's just get shop uh, let me just also make some other shop to make a sale uh shop uh, shop sales if i just go back here so you can see in today's we have three uh three sales just like this okay so uh, the one is in cash the one is in credit the one is in mobile money you can see they are all coming okay uh great so uh this really with this analytics now uh we are really good so if you just go here go get shop sales the one for a specific shop like this one okay and we should also check for the shop if you just like for the single shop did we check for that shop if it exists 
So here, before we do anything, we could just actually just find this shop. So const uh, const existing shop const existing shop, and we can just say await, and we can just say await db dot shop dot find unique and you can just go ahead and find uh where you say here where and we can just go ahead and just say where id is equal shop id just like this and if there is no existing shop if there is no existing shop then we should just go ahead and return response dot status of 404 and uh, json uh, we can just say here error to shop not found and we're gonna so just say data of now okay so if you just went and put here any shop let me just add zero and just like find this uh should just give us okay let me just change one number here to two um, why are we having this error find unique where at least one of the arguments why did I pass? Uh, oh, yeah. DB dot shop dot find unique. Where? I saw ID shop ID should work. Messing up. We could also just check, I think, for ID first of all. If shop ID, if no shop ID here, you could also first check for that. And we can just quickly bring also this. This provide shop ID. And if the shop ID is there, then we can use this uh, show that find unique. We pass in where ID is equal to shop ID. I'm not so sure where the problem comes from, really. Please provide shop ID okay so if i provide the actual shop id and why are they not seeing the shop id 
Because here they're just like saying, please provide shop ID. Let me just go and get just like a shop. Scroll down here to this shop. We have this. I don't know what we have done to this, but shop ID is equal to something. The shop ID comes now all the time. And we just like saying it is on request. Oh, okay, this is like shop sales. Uh, shop ID on request dot params. We haven't changed anything. We are saying here on this shop. Then we put question mark. Sales shop. Then we put shop ID is equal to this. So where could the problem be? Because this is not being read at this point. Shop ID, shop. I think that is the spelling of the shop ID. Mm. Let's go ahead and consider uh consider log. That's so weird. Consider log. Uh request the params first of all and also let's re, uh put shop id that's really super weird super weird just go here let's send Okay, so we just have like here, yeah, this is crazy. We have here just an empty brackets. Are you serious right now? Okay, for this one, we have the request coming back. But then for the shop sales, it is so much like weird to be having a param here with the value and it is not seeing it. It is so frustrating. Okay, let me just remove all this and I get sales. Okay, good. I just say sales shop um i suppose i put a question mark shop id shop id is equal to something Uh, they just go here to shop ID from these ones.
Yes, with the soup ID. Uh, okay, do we need to put a slash on this? Like this? Jesus. Uh, I'm not so sure, guys, why um, our params are not reading at this point. Like, we continuously get an empty objects for some reason. Hmm. Let's test something else for the, uh, with the params. Uh, so we're just like, uh, what were we doing with the params? There is something else we are doing with the params. Uh, let me see. What are we doing with the params? I'm not remembering what we are doing with the params the other day. Yeah. Are they like under sales? Products. Get shop attendance. We could just uh, so just like make um uh we could just like go ahead and the uh, put these in the in the body if uh, It doesn't matter, we could just say go ahead and change this to, uh, we put it on the, like, we just put it, uh, shop, yeah, let's just say here, shop ID, so you just say here, shop ID, just like this. Uh, you see? Then you say, you just say put shop, and then I could put the ID of the shop. Shop ID, just like this. Uh, so if we do that, we can just look on the shops, for instance. You can see how we have like show attendance, shop, then ID. So if you just go to this, uh, we also get this from the params. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I understand. We have the params and the search params. Oh, uh, that's 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 my bad. So if you just like put just like this, guys. Um. Uh, the one we're just like trying to access is not a param dude that is like <laughs> i'm feeling right now so stupid 
Okay, uh, let me just go back to the sales. I think I needed that. So this, if I just, this one would be request, let me duplicate this, request dot query. So there is another one called query, just like this. So if we just enter just like now, you could also just get from the search query. So if you just put like this, it is the one that we have been uh, passing. So this is such a search query. Like if we just went back to the sales here, uh, shop sales, and you pass it just like this. This is just like a shop, uh, and it's not a pass like this. Uh, if you pass it just like this, it's just like should wait oh we changed the uh we changed the rug okay uh so if we just do this okay you could just say like, just comment one yeah so if you just like do this and it don't do put anything else uh, now i think we could just like do that and should just like work now yeah so you can see now it worked because this is actually a param okay these ones are params that's my bad so you can just like either do this shop dot query or you can just get it from the params so if you just do this it will be a param so any of these ones work the params are the ones that you indicate by this okay just by this so this is a param and this is a query and for the query you don't even need to show it you don't need to put anything just like this or any you don't have to you simply just leave it like this and it can be passed just like that so this one we will just like actually pass it just like this shop and then we say slash like this and so this one should also uh, give us the same results so you can see it gives us the same results we can just get another shop get shops uh we can just like, get another shop like this one that has no sales so if we just go here get shop sales uh, if we just like get like this and you can see this one has no sales okay so thank you so much uh, for watching this i'm just going to go ahead and push this and those ones who pushed yesterday's code, I guess you must have gotten uh, some challenges. Uh, when you go back to Rayray, you have to go ahead and add. Um, you have to go ahead and add. Uh, sorry. You have to go ahead and add the. Add your key. Uh, you have to add your, uh, uh, you go to uh, this and you can just go ahead and add your key. So you can see I had the deployment crash and the problem was I had not updated my key for resend. So just go ahead and add your resend key then everything will be okay. I will just go ahead and now make also a deployment for what we have done today. But thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. And also hit that notification bell so that you can receive all the updates when I post new content. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next episode.